everyone, and welcome to a user requested feature build in the Unreal Engine 4. Today, let's look at replicating, on a minor scale, the unique harvesting system in the game RuneScape. Let's jump in. While at face value, the harvesting system in RuneScape can be seen as a fairly complex and large operation, but at its core, the system is actually quite simple. If we break it down, there's actually two main steps at play. The first step is the code to recognize when the mouse clicks and hovers an object, and the second step is to have a random delay happen when you click that object, and at the end, randomly determining whether to grant the user a resource or not. Now, that said, there are a lot of things that we won't be building in this video, including the vast systems for what type of resource you can get, how the type of wielded tool can affect your harvesting chances, etc. Those I'd consider auxiliary to the harvesting system itself. Now, with the vision painted, let's get building. In the content browser, right-click and select Blueprint Class. Choose Actor as the type. For the name, make it BP underscore harvest underscore actor and open it up. This will be the object that will be used as our harvestable object. To make the click detection work, we need to provide a body to be clicked. In the components tab in the top left, click the add component button and find static mesh. Once added, in the details panel, go ahead and change the mesh to something else. For myself, I'll choose this default cube. Let's jump over to the event graph. One of the great benefits of static mesh objects are their innate ability to detect when the cursor hovers them and when they are clicked. To access this innate functionality, select the newly added static mesh component and scroll all the way down its details panel. Here, we will find an event for on clicked. Click the plus button. This event node will be called as soon as our cursor hovers the object and the user clicks. Now that we know when the player clicks this object, we're going to need some variables before we dig into the meat of the system. Navigating to the Variables tab, let's start with a new float variable called WaitTime. Next, add another float variable called CurrentTime. Next, create another float variable called HarvestWaitRange. For this variable though, let's go ahead and make it public, and in the Details panel, changing the type to a float array. Click Compile, and for default values, let's add two indexes. The first index represents the minimum number of seconds to wait until the harvest is complete. Let's just put one. The second index represents the maximum amount of time needed to harvest. And for now, let's put four. Now, let's add another variable called resource chance of the integer data type. This will represent the chance of actually acquiring a resource from this node once you've completed harvesting. Make sure its data type is set to be an array and add three indexes as a default. The first two represent the range. So for here, let's do one and four. The last index represents a number we need to randomly get or exceed in order to acquire a resource. For now, let's put three. This means we need a three or higher to get a resource. The last variable needed will be called harvest timer handle and will be of the data type timer handle. Make sure this one is not in an array. Now with those created, Let's dive in. From our onClicked event node, add a branch. Next, add a get player character node. And from the return value pin, look up get distance to. From the return value pin, look up float less than. In the input box, type 400. Connect this node to the branch. This will verify if, when the object is actually clicked, that the player is an appropriate distance away. In the case that the player is too far, simply drag out a print string node, and for the string, put too far. In the case of us being in range, add a print string that says can harvest. Now, we're going to need our first function. Click the plus function button in the function section of the left side of the screen, and rename this function determine wait time. This function is where we will randomly decide how long the player will need to wait to get a resource. Drag in a set reference to our wait time variable. Also, drag in a get reference to our harvest wait range variable. From this, pull out two get nodes, with the first node set to index 0 and the second set to index 1. Right click and add a random float and range node, and plug the two get nodes respectively into the min and max pins. From the return value pin, plug it into the set reference. With that in place, we now have our wait time complete. Let's jump back. Drag in our new function and connect it to our print string. From this new node, drag out set timer by function name. This node will kick off a timer that will repeatedly call our harvest function over the course 
of our randomly decided wait time. However, we now need our core harvest function. Once more, click the plus function button and call this new function harvest. Our first step is checking whether our current waited time has exceeded the determined wait time. Drag in a get reference to both our wait time and current time variables. From one of them, look up float is greater than float. Plug the current time variable into the top pin and the wait time variable into the bottom. From the boolean pin, add a branch and connect it to the function entry pin. From the false pin, which represents us not having waited long enough, add another branch node. This one will check if the player has moved since the beginning of the harvest. Right click and add a get player character node. From the return value pin, add a get movement component node. From here, look up velocity. And lastly, from here, look up not equal to. Make sure this node is checking whether the velocity is zero in all three axes. Connect the boolean pin. From the false pin, which represents that the player has not moved, add a set reference to our current time variable. From the current time input pin, look up float plus float. From the upper input pin, add a get reference node to our current time variable. From the lower pin, add a get world delta seconds node. This will simply make sure our variable increases proportionately to the actual game time instead of the actual frame rate. And make sure to position it a little ways away so we have some room. Navigating back to the branch, from the true pin which represents that the player has moved and thus cancelled the harvest, add a print string node that says harvest cancelled. From this, add a set reference node to our current time variable. Make sure it's setting the time to zero. After that, drag in a set reference to our harvest timer handle. From this, look up clear and invalidate timer by handle. This will clear our timer so it doesn't perpetually exist in the background. With that, now our player can cancel the harvest by merely moving. Let's jump all the way back to the first branch. From the true pin, which represents a completed harvest, add a print string node that says harvest complete. From that, add a branch. This branch will determine whether we actually get something from this node. Drag in a get reference to our resource chance array. From it, add three different get nodes, each one representing one of the three indexes that comprise the array. Next, right click and add a random integer in range node. Plug indexes 0 and 1 into this node. From the return value pin, look up greater or equals to. Connect the last get node into the bottom pin and connect the boolean pin to the branch. From the false pin, which represents that we unluckily got no resources, add a print string that says no resources gained and plug this into that set current time node from earlier. From the true pin, which represents we have gained a resource, add a cast to top down character node. And from the object pin, look up get player character. Currently, we do not have a variable that represents resources on the player. So let's quickly add that. Jumping out of this blueprint, navigate to your top-down character blueprint, or a character blueprint that you are using for your project. Inside, add a new integer variable called resources. Once added, we don't really need to change anything else. Let's go ahead and get back to our other blueprint. Once back in our harvest function, from the as top-down character pin, look up a get reference to our resources variable. Once added, from it, look up increment int. This will merely increase it by 1. Once that's in, plug it into our set current time variable from earlier. Now with that in place, our core harvest function is done. Let's go back to our event graph. For the timer node we added a while back, change the function name to match the name of our harvest function. For the time pin, add a get world delta seconds node. Lastly, make sure to check looping to be true. Then, from the return value pin, drag in a set reference to our harvest timer handle variable. With all of that, our system is complete. Let's test it. Jumping into our viewport, drag in our harvest actor. Now, in the details panel, those array variables are available to us to change on a per resource basis, offering some hefty customization ability. Before we really pay attention to that, let's go ahead and hit play. If we click on our actor, it'll say we're too far. However, once we're close and we click, 
they'll say we can harvest and begin the timer behind the scenes. Once it's complete, we'll get a message for whether we actually successfully gained a resource or not. If we attempt to move while harvesting though, it'll let us know it's cancelled. And that is our resource harvesting system. Thank you once again for joining me. If you liked this video or found it useful, please make sure you hit that like button and subscribe if you'd like to see more. Most importantly though, leave your thoughts and ideas in the comment section below as I'd love to hear them. As always, I'll see you in the next one.